And I ask the clerk to perform the first reading on item number six, please. An ordinance authorizing and approving an agreement with Mid America Regional Council for the acquisition of orthophotography for the city of Raytown, Missouri. Mr. Knoll, help us understand orthophotography, please. Orthophotography is actually aerial photographs of the entire city. This is a project that's undertaken by the Mark um, GIS department. And aerial photography is very helpful in enforcement of codes and also for engineering purposes where we can simply identify structures, uh, roadways, driveways, trees, um, just various items. It's very helpful having an updated aerial photo of the city so you can see how things have changed. Uh, it comes in handy when you're reviewing development proposals. You can actually see how close a, maybe a neighboring house is or how far away from a road they are. Various items, it's just very helpful to us in the past. Um, and we've started uh, purchasing these items in the past. We got off the cycle of purchasing them every two to four years. And now Mark is um, religiously every two years going back with a large group of all, mainly all of the metropolitan uh, counties, including Jackson County, Clay County, Cass County, uh, Johnson County, Wyandotte County, and I think even another one in Kansas. There's a lot. Anyway, it's a $396,000 project. And for us uh, to participate with this project and get the updated aerial photos for the city is uh, $371.29. So we think it's, a, it's a, an example of a very good value for the city. The amount of information that we can um, glean from those aerial photographs in many different fashions is, just makes it very worthwhile, especially for $371. And they really want us to agree to participate in this project before they move forward. That's why we bring it before the board because it is an intergovernmental agreement, requires a bill for an intergovernmental agreement, and therefore the two readings. Yeah, very good. Remind the board this is the first reading. I'm going to go to Mr. Green. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I got a couple questions. Uh, first off, how how detailed are these these photos? I guess. You know, when I'm thinking of aerial photography, I'm just thinking of what I see back in the mayor's office, you know, but I mean, you yeah. You've been in my office? You're, yeah, well, the one here. <laughs> now you know, yeah. No. Um, I'm, I'm curious how detailed, I, I guess what I'm trying to get at, well, my, I'll tell you my two questions and we'll get to this, but um, I'm curious to how detailed they are and, and how, if, why this is necessary for you to do your job, for codes and such to do their job. But secondly, um, the, when was the last time we had uh, photography such like this? Um, I'll take the last one first. The sure. last time we did that, I believe, was in 2010, is the aerial photography that we have. Um, we would also like to acquire the, the 2012 uh, aerial photography, not only for codes, but for public works when working on a uh, improvement project it's a great way to utilize that with the the property lines that we have in our gis and you can identify what might be an issue you can actually identify manhole lids you can it, the quality of the photo is so great you can actually see the shadow from a fire hydrant so okay it's very detailed um provides a lot of information just so that you can see is there paving there how generally how wide is that paving um, you can see fences, and it's just very helpful to have that aerial photography um, to identify features on the ground when you're considering a project or um, simply trying to identify some of the manholes or uh, storm sewer structures that we don't want to go out and use GPS to identify each and every one of them. You can actually start placing those storm sewer structures in a GIS format utilizing the um, the aerial photograph you can use it to get the width of roadways so the amount of square square yards and tons for the roadway projects so it's just very helpful in many different ways so it's, pr it's pretty good close you yes said you see uh, and in terms of the quality uh, each pixel represents six inches of ground so that's the oh, resolution okay. so all right that's kind of was getting at. all right yeah, it's very uh, detailed and very effective i'd be happy to show it to you on gis so Looking forward to it. Th thank you. Mr. Kramer. Um, when you 
entertain the idea of codes enforcement uh, by by these pictures? I mean, how in, how in depth, or is that something Mr. Benson would have to answer? I I know a lot of the times it's utilized for um, gravel driveways that have been extended. Uh, outside the boundaries of the regulations, so that helps address it, and he can identify other areas that he utilizes it in. Well, and and my my question because because of privacy uh, issues and and having gone out on uh, complaints, when you say you've got a privacy fence, you can't just go up and reach over and take a picture. You have to have access from a neighbor's yard or something like that looking through their window i mean is this going to improve our accessibility I, I can think of a couple different places where we got backyards that are full of stuff but um they're safe because of a privacy fence and neighbors don't want to get involved are are we going to take it to that level it, no, on the aerials we don't use it for that purpose it doesn't really allow us to use it for that purpose it's more um, on code enforcement, it's more limited to um, property owners who say they have, have had a driveway, a gravel driveway, for instance, on their property for years since whatever date. And we, through with, as we update the aerial photos, like what's proposed tonight, we still have the old ones we can rely on, go back to, and we can, it actually gives us a chronology. We can start looking to see has not has the driveway actually been there and has it been maintained over those years and that's just one example um, the codes part I th that andy was referring to i think um, or at least in part um, is more enforcement of development codes or zoning codes um, things like that we frequently get people that come in and they want to add on to a driveway and we can pull up the aerial photo with the property lines and we can see where their existing driveway is they can just show us Here's where I'm wanting to add on the driveway or build this shed or build this house onto the house or whatever it may be. Well, today we had a, we met with a, um, some realtors or developers on a potential project here in town. We used the aerial photos to look at the property, the, the street right of way with the utility, the sewer lines, the, all that stuff that Andy talked about and in a context of codes and development codes in that regard. Okay, so, so you're not talking property maintenance codes. Then. Sometimes, but on a very on a much more <clears throat> excuse me a much more limited basis to like the driveways as an example. And I'm sure I'm sure there's other examples as well. I'm just not thinking. Well, of those. if we're able to utilize them on driveways, why not be proactive in property maintenance issues where you got junk, trash, and debris in a, a backyard, or is it just not admissible it, in court? It's, it's a snapshot. It's like you take a picture today, and it's that picture is there for until the next picture taken. Where, yeah, we can see if junk, trash, debris is there today, but we don't know when it got there. We don't know when it will be gone, or if it's the same junk and trash. But if you've got a current picture, and maybe uh, maybe it's not admissible in court. Because it, I, you know, I'm not a fan yeah. of Big Brother looking into every right. aspect of my life, but. It, um, if, if you've got an issue with a, a yard, I would hope if we had a tool in place to um, greater enforce that type of stuff, um, we, we would be able to use it. I don't know, or maybe, um, maybe that system doesn't tie into your department the way it does in with uh, Mr. Knowles. Or we, we use it on historical perspectives of, you know, in 2000, 14, 2012, 2010, so on, to go back and see if the pro if was the problem there in 2010. Oh no, it doesn't show it. Sure. But in 2014, it was. So then we know, and and in that sense, yes, it does help us in court or other places. Okay. Okay. Or Thank other you. ways. Mr. Azers next, then down to Mr. Ertz. Um, just so I clarify, so. We, we already have a history and good records of aerial photos of Raytan that we've been using. Uh, and so all we're really doing here is upgrading current pictures. Correct. Correct. So. We're tracking. It helps identify where there's been changes to property. Um, and sometimes it, the resolution just continues to get better and better and the quality of the photos get better. So, um, so we already have a cam. I mean, what did we use to take pictures with before? I know, like I, like I said before, we already have a a current record of, of these aerial photos that go back really quite a ways. Did we take those pictures ourselves? No, this is uh, performed by an 
um, airplane, I believe, at okay. two or 3,000 feet, and they, they take that elevation. I forget exact elevation where they fly it at, but it's and taken so, by an airplane. All right, so we're going to purchase the camera and take it ourselves. No, 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 we're participating. It's actually $396,000 to take the pictures of all of um, the area that's wanted, and our portion of that is 300 dollars uh, $371. Oh, okay. Okay. I understand. Um, cool. That's, that's all I really want to know. It's just mainly just an upgrade. Yes. Just for, the, for the current. Right. It's okay. information so we can make right. good decisions. Thank you. Mr. Schwartz. Uh, I just think you're, it, that's an awesome price for considering the, uh, the amount of information you're going to have. I know it's utilized when you're planning your sewer projects to, in order for our engineers to, to decide routes. And I believe we also use this for, uh, uh, say if there's a group home so that we can uh, send notifications to uh, a distance around a certain address I believe isn't this where we receive uh, the information on, on distances uh, for Different types of businesses that have restrictions on how close they can be with each other. So glad you're doing it And I assume this will be met at the next meeting That's the plan. Mr. Mock you're next and then back to Miss Emerson No, sir. Mr. Van Buskirk. Maybe it was I'm sorry. Okay uh, well, I understand from the the ones we had back in 2006 to 2010, the number of sunbathers went up in backyards went up 20 percent. Was that correct? Um, that was a joke. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think I think the <laughs> the uh, the the amount of this sounds like a real a real bargain for us. Uh, I I am curious as to I know there are a number of entities involved in this is our share equal with everyone's or is it proportionate to the size that's being photographed of the, of the land mass uh, your second one is correct it's proportionate to the size of the area so we pay for just our square miles compared to the square miles of the entire project sounds like a bargain to me yes it is thank you miss emerson thank you uh who did the survey before the aerial photography um, I do not remember the. Do you want the company that did the aerial photography, or Mark has led it uh, in the past, to my knowledge. Um, I'm not certain of the company that's actually performed the aerial uh, photography services. Okay. Well, my concern is that this information will be uh, shared with NGA, and. On their website, it says it's a unique combination of an intelligent agency and combat support agency. It is a world leader in timely, relevant, accurate, and actionable uh, geo uh, intelligence. And it, and it enables the U.S. intelligent com uh, community and the Department of Defense to fulfill the president's national security priorities to protect the nation. Um, I have a problem with, with that, that they would be able to uh, have access to that, especially when you have about 19% of the people in the United States that don't trust the government anyway. And uh, I just, I, I'm not against having it done. I am against sharing it with certain ent entities. Uh, if you remember back in, in June of 2012, when St. Louis had uh, uh, tanks from uh, Maryland going down their streets. And, and I think that was one of the, the things, you know, we could have that here in Raytown. And I'm concerned about that. I'm not against the aerial thing to help you, but I am against it sharing with everybody else. I think that's an invasion of privacy for the citizens of Raytown. And they should have a say in whether they want that done or not. That's all. Thank you. Mr. Green. Um, gentlemen, I just wanted to say that um, I know that with some initiatives and stuff I've brought you in the past, that WebGIS has helped severely in those, uh, especially when it comes to utilities or um, property lines and stuff like that. Uh, it's proven to be a, a very valuable asset in the past. Um, I, I, like others on this board, do have concerns uh, over privacy matters. Uh, that being said, I feel like that uh, the federal government might already be able to, you know, access a satellite and look anywhere they want. 
uh, already. Uh, that being said, I don't th I don't think that this is uh, something that is going to uh, uh, be a severe infringement upon uh, uh, privacy, and I, I feel like that it's something that will uh, overall be very beneficial uh, for uh, both your uh, teams and uh, managing your departments and overall making Raytown a um, better community. Do we already have a motion? We don't need one. It's the first reading. No, that's fine. Any other any other questions or comments uh, tonight? As this is the first reading, we'll see it again in the following weeks, Mr. Van Buskirk. Well, I, I did notice that it it does state on number seven that ownership, access, and distribution of orthos. Each participating agency will have ownership uh, within their juris jurisdictional boundaries. Uh, and for areas outside their boundaries, for which they have also agreed to share cost with uh, overlapping jurisdictions. So, is that um, how, do, how does that apply to what Ms. Emerson was talking about in item eight? Um, that will allow us to share the information with consultants that are working for us and share it with other uh, people for city related uh, items so that we don't have to continue to pay uh, for that information if we utilize it in a, a different fashion, I guess is a good way to put it. It's, uh, it basically just allows you to share it with other uh, people without paying, or other design firms, or for other purposes you may not have thought about at the beginning without having to pay another fee for that one instance. Will we make that determination or someone else make that determination for us? Um, it'll actually be available not only from us, but from the county. And there's many different levels you could, I, you could utilize this same information. So um, we don't solely control who can access this information at all. So you can get it through the county, you can get it through Mark, you could get it through the USGS. You can, there's quite a few different areas where you can access information similar to that. Uh, typically all we do uh, is at the counter, if somebody comes in and has a question about their property, we access the GIS information. One of the layers is the aerial photography and it helps answer some of their questions. That's, and we may print it out for them, but that's the extent of what we do for the most part. <coughs> I can see where we might utilize it with engineering firms for location of storm sewer, sanitary sewer, uh, items such as that, but that's about what I would anticipate utilizing it. Do, do we utilize Google Earth at all for satellite? Yes, we utilize Google Earth quite a bit, uh, Google Images. Street View. Uh, we utilize those things quite a bit. Okay, very good, thank you. Mr. Azure. Yeah, just a quick question. I wouldn't think that this information would fall outside of the Sunshine Law. If we purchase it, it becomes city property that, uh, and it's on paper, anybody could come in and access it if they wanted to look at it. Would that be correct? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Green. Uh, just one final thought here. I, reading through this again, I, I realize that since Jackson County is taking part in this already, they, I'm assuming, are going to receive maps of our area already since we are in Jackson County. So, I mean, wouldn't you say, or I mean, at least in my head, I'm thinking that our $371 here is essentially they're taking the pictures already. We're just purchasing access to our maps. Is yeah. that a That's good, a good correct assumption? It, yes. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that was a correct assumption. Yeah, this project will go forward with, without, um, with or without our participation. Okay. Thank you. All right, I'm going to dispense with uh, any further discussion on item number six, as it is just the first reading, and we'll see it uh, on a future meeting agenda here. Move to item number seven.